It's a super exciting new format. Once again, something that we've n- not yet seen in competitive Hearthstone, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, George, you've had a, a chance to play around with the SEAL tool quite a bit, I imagine? I have. It's pretty cool. And uh, when we were testing it, we tested it as a team, like this format is. So it's pretty cool to see, like, you see all the cards, and then you have to decide as a team, like, maybe I'm, like, the rogue player. I'm like, oh, give me that rogue card. I need that rogue card. And then someone's like, no, 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 I need that card for my deck, stuff like that. Or we just decide as a team, spread the cards out, stuff like that. Yeah, and we had a chance to watch uh, some of the teams yesterday go through their practice runs where they, you know, took a... a uh, 30 minutes, which is a time limit, to uh, try and build their decks to get a, a feel for the pacing of, of how the deck building is going to work. And it was cool to see the different teams have different strategies and approaches to actually building the decks, right? Definitely, yeah. So part of it is depending on the cards that they receive for the decks, how they're going to build their decks. But we saw like a ton of different strategies. Like the, Just the way the teams work together was different. Like Some teams were like, all three is one, deciding all three decks at the same time, making them even and consistent. That was what Archon's strategy kind of was. Other classes like like Tempo Storm or other teams like Tempo Storm, which is Firebat and Raynad, um, are favoring to things like just oh stats, curve, get it down, stuff like that. So we'll see a, a ton of different that across all the different teams. Yeah, we'll definitely have to see. And with the format out of the way, uh, let's take a look at what's at stake for these teams. Of course, first prize will go away with three thousand dollars, one thousand dollars per player. Uh, second place will get fifteen hundred. The winners will also get customized DX Racer. Uh, gaming chairs, which of course the players will be sitting in those uh, in the studio today. They're super cool. And also an awesome Team Brawl Hearthstone trophy, which we got a chance to take a look at it yesterday. It's pretty sweet. And now let's take a look at the schedule for today. How important to go over that? All right. First, we have uh, Cloud9 versus Archon. Who do you think is going to win that? Or who are you cheering for? Oh, man. that That's a, that's a, a really tough one. Of course, um, we have to mention there's some arena-only players or some constructed players, so uh, it's going to be pretty cool to see who wins that one. Yeah, next up we have Tempo Storm versus Liquid. And Tempo Storm, is, of course, we had some roster changes. It's going to be Firebat, Raynet, and Eloise mm-hmm. versus Liquids, which is Savitz, Trump, and Dog. Mm-hmm. Next up we have Archon versus Liquid. Who are you liking there? Uh, well, it, it, it's tough to say. Again, there's there's Trump from, from Team Liquid, who is representing them. He used to play with Liquid Value. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, of course, Tempo Storm versus Cloud9. And then the big one, Team Archon versus Tempo Storm. Of course, the two players started organizations. Uh, there's a bit of a rivalry going on there. There's been some, you know, swap arounds with yeah. players. And, and then, of course, we'll round off the match stage with Team Liquid versus Cloud9, followed by the Grand Finals. Uh, at the end of the day, which will be the top two teams as far as points go, uh, which will be that game score. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about that first matchup. Team Archon versus Cloud9. Um, uh, We talked about it a little bit. Who Mm -hmm. are you predicting? Yeah, as you were mentioning, it kind of feels, from a constructed player's point of view, like, oh, this is kind of like an arena format. It's kind of an arena Mm -hmm. thing. But we had a chance to talk to Hafu a bit before, and she was saying she doesn't really feel like she has an advantage as an arena-only player over the constructed players. Yeah, Part well, of that is, yeah, because the way that Arena Jeff works is it's kind of like card by card, whereas this is like you see all the cards and then you build a deck from there, which she thinks is more like constructed. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, how these guys build their decks. But to get a little bit more insight, we actually have Dan standing by on the stage with the team captains for the first two teams. Thank you very much, TJ. I'm joined by the captains of Archon and Cloud9. We have Amaz to my right. Amaz, how's it going so far? Yeah, it's been going good. Uh, this is going to be a fun event, and uh, the whole team is excited. You have a new teammate that has never been performed in, or so never played in a, a very big profile tournament, and it's like the first time you ever met him. What's it like having Amnesiac here? Yeah, Amnesiac is uh, really good online. He's been a really good player. He finished uh, high ladders. I think he uh, qualified for uh, the Blizz- BlizzCon preliminaries this uh, season as well. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be cool. It's actually his first live event ever. So uh, yeah, he's excited too. He doesn't feel too pressured. How, how is the team dynamic now? I know recently you guys had some roster shuffles, but it's very exciting, too, because you have Amnesiac. But overall, how's the morale right now in Archon? Uh, yeah, it's been going good. Uh, we're excited about this event, and there's going to be Cursed Trials as well, where everybody's going to be uh, invited and be playing. So, uh, yeah, we're still going strong. Cool. And I'm going to head over to Tides here. Now, you guys are really an interesting bunch, too, because it feels like you guys have fragmented but came back together as one. Uh, what's it like being on a team with Strifegro and, and Hafu? Uh, Hafu's like the energizer bunny, and me and Strifegro are very like laid back, right? Um, but uh, in terms of this event, we come from like three very different angles and like, you know, how the game should be played. So like when we build decks together, um, I think it meshes really well. Now, you haven't 
exactly been playing Hearthstone throughout the very beginning in terms of competitive play. Uh, what's inspired you to come back here? Because I know Cloud9 recently announced that you rejoined the roster. Was it specifically things like this event, or is there something that triggered you? Uh, well, this uh, event specifically is probably some of the most fun I've ever had playing Hearthstone, um, uh, testing for it and stuff. Uh, but it's just, you know, I got I dealt with all my personal stuff, and I'm ready to come back, basically. How do you think your chances are against Archon? They're a team that's been well known to work very cohesively to build strong decks for a lot of their tournaments. Do you guys feel like you can match up to them? Uh, we have the best arena player in the world and the two best constructed players in the world, so feeling pretty confident. Well, uh, I want to I ask what Amaz thinks about that, because you've been dipping both a lot in Arena, both with your 110 initiative, as well as being able to still maintain the top of the ladders of Constructed. What do you think comes into making a really good team here to win this tournament? Um, I mean, overall, we have a very well-rounded um, group of players. And this is a new format after all, right? I mean, we haven't been in a sealed tournament before. And as much as we drafted, uh, we haven't actually played a real game before. We, I know uh, Cloud9 and Temple Storm actually practiced a month ago. <laughs> so, um, you know, they, they might have an edge there, but uh, we picked things up really fast. Yeah, that's right. We got to test a little bit with the teams. Uh, so they do might have a leg up, but you mm -hmm. also have an opportunity to practice as well. Um, and, and now you're going to be playing against Cloud9. If you were to give a score, I really hope that it becomes either 0-9 or 9-0. Obviously for oh, yeah, the yeah. chat to really enjoy it as well. <laughs> so I'm guessing, is it going to be an 9 Cloud 9 or is it going to be 9-0? Well, the O is in cloud, and it's cloud nine, not nine cloud. So, mm, okay. yeah, I think we have good chances. So, based off the sequencing, you're saying it's already pre foreseen, right? Yeah, it's going to yeah, be a zero nine. Well, All right. I think I win one game. You know, don't want to crush them out too much. All right, Archon's going to let you win one game, Tides. What's the score going to be? What do you think it's going to be for the series result? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to go 3-0. That's all I care about. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll shake hands. It's time to begin the draft. Good luck. We're going to send over to TJ and Hype to see what's going to happen next. Thank you once again, Dan. It's always nice to hear from the team captains, uh, Tide said. The two best constructed players in the world oh, yeah. and the best arena player in the world. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, it checks out. Okay. How can you argue with that? Logic checks out. But we're about to jump into what I think is one of the most exciting parts of this format, it is the draft stage. They'll get 48 packs, you know, mm -hmm. spread across all the different expansions, 240 cards, and they have to build three decks. Each player will, of course, pilot one of those decks in the, the round robin heat. So we talked a little bit earlier about the strategy going in. Um, we talked a little bit about how we got to see the team's practice yesterday. What do you think is the best way to approach this draft phase? I don't know the best way, but I think we will see like a little bit of individualism in the Cloud9 team. You heard Tide say he's gonna go 3-0. He doesn't care about the rest. I mean, he's being a little glib, but, you know, but I think we're going to see that from the Cloud9 team is where people are like, really like, this is my deck. I'm going to argue for those cards. Whereas Archon was the team I saw yesterday where mm -hmm. they had a bunch of good cards and they're like, let's just spread these out over three good decks, make it consistent, make it win. Yeah. And it's kind of funny to see how, you know, the, the teams argue over uh, trying to get the, the card in their deck and trying to... Yeah. Uh, uh, make an argument for like putting like a zombie chow. Well, I want yeah. the zombie chow on my deck. We only draft one. Uh, but it looks like we are about ready to jump into the drafting phase. Hyped. Let's open some packs. Let's open some packs. Let's see what we got here. So as you can see on the left, is how the the packs are separated out to be about the same ratio as you'd get in arena with the new cards versus the old cards. You have the pack. I mean, they're just watching, no note taking or anything crazy. Just waiting for that first legendary. Yeah, you, you're really at this phase. You're you're sort of waiting for cards to, to jump out at you. Um, yeah. You're waiting to see what the trend is with what cards you're opening, uh, what good class cards you're getting. If there's any really high impact legendaries or high impact class cards, uh, then uh, that's when you start you know talking about what decks to build. Yeah, and again, it's not like arena where you see just a few and you have to pick as you go. You kind of see the whole thing, so you don't want to like make any crazy conclusions at the beginning. You want to see the whole pool and then make decisions. So players are looking like for legendaries, of course, but those are going to stick out. But maybe players are looking for like, oh, let's see how many mechs do we have? Can we do a mech deck? And then once we actually get, once they finish opening the packs, they're probably going to sort by a class, see what kind of class cards they have for each class, and see which classes they want to go with from there. Mm -hmm. The big thing here is, you know, uh, how many of the powerful cards you're going to get. Uh, if you get multiple legendaries, like say you get two Dr. Booms, you can actually put a Dr. Boom in two of your decks. Oh, there's a Black Knight. There's a Legendary. Yeah, Black Knight. That uh, is a pretty good card because taunts have really oh, high definitely. value in this in this format. You're, you can almost guarantee that your opponent's going to have some type of taunt card in their deck. 
Yeah, here's some murmurings about like what classes. I heard Rogue being mentioned. A little bit more. Yeah, oh, and it's Kel'Thuzad. Did you see that? I'm watching. Oh, those are Kel'Thuzad? on the right. Nixie on the right. Kel'Thuzad on the left. Baron Rivendare. I don't know if that's good in the arena. And Team Archon on the left side here just opened three Sludge Belchers in two of solid. their packs. Yeah. Uh, so that means they'll be able to put. Oh, oh my God! Did you Death see that? Deathwing. Deathwing. That and, was a Deathwing. Uh, oh, I mean, I was looking at the Nazdor move, but there was a Deathwing too. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a Deathwing. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So they're finished over there. And, I mean, I saw more legendaries for Archon, but that doesn't mean anything. It could be like something like, like just a bunch of Paladin class cards are like just as yeah. good as legendaries. If you get a ton of Paladin class cards, that's just a strong Paladin deck that'll just beat everything. Yeah, and it. Um, yeah, Nazdorma, We can see them mousing over that. They also got Deathwing, I believe, in the same pack, but. As you mentioned, legendaries don't mean their biggest thing. If they're high impact legendaries like Dr. Boom um, or like the Black Knight, uh, that can be a big deal, but uh, it all depends. And we're finishing up here for Team Archon. They got a little bit of a late start. Yeah. Um, I opening... think something might have happened with Cloud9's draft. They might have to redraft or just get more cards. That was a really quick draft. But yeah, we'll just look at uh, Archon's for now, which is really solid. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it looks They're like they, right they missed the League of Explorers card. So okay. uh, we'll get word on that in a second. But Team Archon, uh, Tuskar Jouster, not the best of rares. 5-5 uh, five, five body is still pretty good for Paladins. But uh, you're looking for a little bit more high impact. It's Again, it's we have to make this pretty clear. It's not Arena. Yeah. Um, you're not picking between three cards. You're, you're building a deck from a giant pool of cards. So while, you know, it's similar to Arena in that different cards have different strengths uh, than Constructed, but... It's completely different as far as drafting your decks go. Uh, here's the League of Explorers pack where, you know, if you believe in power creep, which does exist to some extent, here's going to be like your best cards, mm -hmm. which are like at the end, which is kind of weird because you've been thinking the whole time. And then you get to see your best cards at the very end. A lot of yeah. camels. A lot of camels. A lot of camels. We were actually talking about the camel yesterday. I think it, it's pretty strong. It, it, okay, so here's my reasoning. I don't think it's that strong because you give your opponent one drop too, which is pretty likely that they have one. Yeah. And they get the initiative with their one drop to trade in how they please. That's true. At the end of the day, Hunter's not that great in Arena, so we might not see it. Yeah. We actually had, um, like, the the practice runs mm -hmm. yesterday, um, and I think two of the four teams in their practice runs used Hunter because they drafted such good Hunter cards. Yeah. Well, it was Hi more that they didn't get any other good cards. They yeah. had to play Hunter because they had true. so many Hunter cards. That's true. Savannah Hyman is a fantastic card mm -hmm. uh, okay, overall. So it looks like, yeah, Cloud9 is going to redo it, which is... Good. They didn't have like a particularly good or bad pack, it looked like. But it looked like Archon's pack definitely was better. But maybe that's just because I was watching there's more. Let's keep an eye out for those legendaries. Kraken's pretty actually pretty good. Yeah. It's a pretty good uh, late game card. Yeah. All right, we're hoping for backstab. Uh, oh, Flame Strike. Flame Strike. That's one of your primo cards. Yeah, AoE is such important is so important in this type of format. Uh, just because a lot of times when you're building a deck from a pool of cards like this. Uh, a lot of players will say the most important thing is curve. You want to play creatures on curve, yeah. strong creatures on curve. And what AoE does is it's, it's a comeback tool. It's the, the, a comeback tool in a situation where there's not really many other ways to come back. Yeah, you come back on tempo and value, which is super important. Yeah. You think that one, fl one flame strike, water, one wild elemental, is that already enough to say, hey, let's there's, do a mage deck? There's a sure. frostbolt Just also. Just those three cards. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. Uh, so they're probably already talking Next about, you know, mage. Uh, Boulder Fist Ogre is actually a fantastic common in this type of environment. So. Yeah. Now, Backstab's a great rogue card, and rogues are great in arena. But again, we were talking to Half Blue, and she was saying why rogue doesn't have quite as much of an advantage mm -hmm. in this format compared to arena. And the reason is because rogue's advantage is the hero power in arena. And in this format, you have a little bit better cards, so you're going to be hero powering less. Yeah. And I did feel Very that true. when we were doing the testing. I was, I was picking the rogue. I was like, I got a pretty good rogue deck, and it was like losing. <laughs> like, why is this? Yeah, we're actually seeing some pretty high-value mechs. I like that um, Blast Mage, yeah. Oh, are we going to see a mech mage? It, it's possible. Uh, we did see double Water Elemental. Uh, we saw double Flame Strike, and we've seen some high-value mechs, including the Dr. Oh, Dr. Boom. Boom. That is the card. Oh. Minibot's pretty good, too. Yeah. A little under. Trogzor. Trogzor. Uh, Trogzor is... Power Mace is solid, too. Yeah. So they have a few different options with mech. Like, mage is so good, maybe it doesn't need the mechs. Maybe they give the mechs to uh, Shaman, for example. But yeah. again, it depends. Do you want to stack one deck? Or do you want to just kind of spread it out? Dr. Boom, especially in Arena, is such a high-impact card. A lot of Death Spites. We saw a lot of a lot of the teams actually build Warrior, even though it's not considered the greatest in Arena. But again, this is an Arena. There's a Camel. I only saw a glimpse of that. I think that was in the Arc Mage Rafam. 
Is that the, is the that one the that gives legendary? you the cards? It gives you the artifact. Yeah. Is that, it's got to be good. It's 10 It's got to be good. It's got to be good. The, well, the card is 9 mana, but I believe it gives you a 10 mana artifact. Is it better than the Kraken, though, which is 9 mana as well? That's tough. It depends which artifact you get. I know one of the artifacts gives you like a board full of like 2-2s two or something, or 3-3s. Three the Skulker's pretty good. Oh, another Skulker. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we saw a backstab, two Skulkers. We saw a Pit Snake. But, I mean, that's what else do you need? Was right? that a th I think that was a third Skulker, actually. Lots of dragon consorts as well. Oh, yeah. So for anyone unclear with the format, it's like a constructed deck, so you can use two of any card. If you get uh, to use two of any card, and, like say you get six Paladin Treaders, for, then you could have two Paladin Treaders in each deck. Yeah, very true. Or if you get three of a specific card, you can put two in yeah. one deck and one in the other. Uh, it works the same with Legendary. Isn't it Nixia? They got Nixia back. Yeah, Earth Elemental also is a fantastic card. And a Blizzard, I think that's... Mm -hmm. They can go, you know, right for it. And... Uh, that Scarlet's good, too. Three drops are important. Yeah. You know, it's like a lot of teams that were building, they kind of had, like, a lack of three drops. There's the Death... Okay, cool. They got the Deathwing back. They got the back. Deathwing back. Nice. Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh, I think they were somehow, like, able to reset that that group, because, yeah. How's the Deathwing Nazdor move? All right. Cool, well, cool. It, it looks like uh, uh, Team Archon has actually already started the deck building phase. Okay, yeah, and they won't get extra time. It'll just be. Yeah, you can see the before. actual timers on top of their screen. Each team has 30 minutes to build their three Ooh, decks. Lane and Flurry, Poison, and a Barber. That's pretty solid. Yeah, and right away um, we, we predicted it. Too. Cloud9 is, is looking at the Mage deck, um, Yeah, which seems to be a likely choice. They got a lot of mini bots. Paladin is one of the strongest classes in this format because of how many powerful commons they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, definitely. Consecration, Minibot, Muster, True Silver, they're all so good. And then you can go into Director, you can go Value late game, or you can just go Aggro with that. Yeah. So we have an idea of what the players on Cloud9 are doing with how strong they are. But I wonder if we can get a listen in onto their team communication to see exactly their thought process behind some of the classes that they're picking. Warlock. I think Warlock, yep. Mage, Yep, we're doing Warlock This is sure. really good, right? Yeah. Yep. One, two, one. Dreadfinal's still good, is it? Yes. You got the Death Bites, Four, King Defenders. Five, Four's not bad. Six, I think I'm worried. That's, that's it, that's it. Uh, it. No, no Axe. Nine. I would, I no, this isn't playable. Here, Amaz talking about Warrior. See, yeah, they've been... Uh, good warrior cards, yeah, and then they were talking. So it looks like both players, uh, both teams are just kind of deciding which classes they want to go with first. But it was weird. Archon was like looking at the neutrals, like with their decision making as towards the class. Whereas, as you can see, Cloudnet just scrolling through the class cards real quick, and yeah. they probably already had a good idea just on the pack opening what cards. So they're kind of just double checking. Yeah, look, Cloudnet's already made a decision. Mage Paladin, the two strongest, in my opinion, and then they went with Priest or Druid. So it looks like definitely Mage or Paladin, and then probably they're gonna pick between the second two. They're just like gonna check out the druid. Do they have any ramp? They have the Garnassus, but no innervates or wild ghost. Do yeah. they have the combo? I see a roar, which might actually be better than the combo in arena. You just want the roars and creatures. Yeah, um, I mean, it nourish. Oh, nourish. It, the value That's sort of gets less when you nourish if you're behind in board. Yeah. But I'm wondering if nourish. It's probably got to be card draw most of the time rather than the ramp. Yeah, you're giving them so much, you know, value from your hand if. Uh, especially if your hand doesn't have mana. I mean, I guess it's situational. If you're, like, in a curve into a yeah. volcanic lumber or an iron bark protector, then sometimes Nourish is great because those cards can win games by themselves. But Pretty solid priest late game deck. Mind control, like, the ultimate late game card yeah. in Arena. It's a little too slow and constructed, but Arena, you got the time. Yeah, what's interesting to me is a lot of the players yesterday were drafting warrior decks because of, you know, some great warrior commons, like yeah, Despite. Tons of weapons. So hopefully we'll see some oozes going to decks. Yeah. I know Firebat was like, everyone's going to be doing weapons, and we need oozes in our deck. It's interesting because a lot of players will say that warrior's weak in Arena, and yeah. that's one of the big differences is uh, where you notice the difference between this format and Arena is that warrior, when you can choose from the pool of cards... Yeah becomes so much better because you can pick and choose weapons that you want to use. Oh, we have two fireworks and two death bites. It's actually pretty good now. That, yeah, that's and that's not a rare thing. Those are both commons. Yeah, and we saw I think it was uh, Liquid the other day. They had a uh, they had like two shield maidens and one gore howl. Like, how are you not going to pick that? Yeah. It looks like Archon's still deciding on the class. I wonder if we could hear like what they're talking about. Maybe. Yeah. It's ambitious, though. I feel like this is fine for the mech deck. 
Okay, I heard mech deck for mage. Right. Yeah. So they are gonna st take like the. They're gonna take their mage deck and put yeah, the mechs in it as well. It's not that good. There's no flame strike. And that seems kind of like more I mean, of like a stacking one class strategy, I mean, which is not what they did yesterday, which is where they just had a ton the of good cards and they separated them. So I think it depends on the card. It's better than Pierce in my opinion. The draft they get. I don't yeah. know. Double Valens and a mech deck. Uh, this is uh, the strategy you mentioned earlier. Is basically, what you do is you go through, you eyeball what you think are going to be your your three or four strongest decks based on how many class cards you have. And you put all the good class cards in the deck already. So then you have a base to build off of. It's like just so annoying. So we common, need two drops. If we're going to pick and choose what commons you need to put in the deck to make it thing. stronger. Which means that Prius, masters, we have I know we have. Two it might not mean much, but Prius is the two and two Strike Pro kind of in the middle controlling, whereas the other two guys are talking to them. Yeah. Maybe that could be kind of like their strategic captain. Not mech two drops. Um. Why two drops? Oh. What the heck? Yeah. We were talking about Zayle earlier, and. uh he was a big Magic it's player, mm -hmm. but he yeah. said but priest, Sealed right? in Magic was, quote, in awful format, well, or a terrible format. Chows. So he wasn't a fan yeah, of In his opinion, the yeah. Centric for yeah, for um, sure. The Druid won't Which is, it, is kind of funny, I know. Uh, Maz okay. also has experience in, yeah. in other cards. So, okay. The too. Chows will go with the Mech. Um, there, there's, it, it's crazy to think that of the differences between all the formats, you know, between Constructed Arena, between the Sealed format, it's completely different. You can be Are great and constructed like without being a good deck builder so because you play a few decks yeah. and you learn how to play those decks really well. Yeah. And as we saw in the uh, the video, there's no net decking in this one. No net decking. No, net decking. no excuses. Yeah. I can't remember the third one. No, uh, no something take else. No take backsies. There you go. Exactly. Uh, there's a lot of good comments on the side of Team Archon that we didn't notice. Uh, they got quite a few sludge belchers, which is a good thing. It's a fantastic card. Uh, is that a mech in your thermoplug? Well, uh, Team Archon has a lot of great comments, but uh, Cloud9, it looks like they're struggling a little bit more. they got a couple good legendaries. We'll have to see. Let's listen in on a Cloud9's communication to see exactly what they're talking about. It's a Paladin, no? I think a uh, Paladin is actually a little better than... The Warlock? Yeah. Really? No, I would, I would play Warlock over this. Um, there's only one, two, three. There's only nine strong cards, and this isn't that good. But keep in mind that we need that a, we need a deck to dump our dragons in, and this could be the best dump deck to dump our dragons. We have really or good dragons. Or priest, right? Yeah, or priest. But I'm saying warlock, mage, and priest Pri or paladin. Priest is not good to dump dragons in. Yeah, that's true. Because we're going for Valence chosen type priests. We we don't, we don't want like Agnixia and stuff. It's not isn't that important. Isn't this pretty nuts though? Yeah, it's it fine, but nuts. even if it is nuts, we don't need a dump or dragons in this deck. Okay, we just okay. need the early game with the villains chosen, right? So. Okay. But um, I, f I feel like I want to play this one. Okay. Yeah. I just think it's actually a better list than this. Like, I, these are insane, but mm -hmm. it's only nine cards. Okay. I guess maybe I'll try building yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Because Paladin is still Paladin, right? Yeah, exactly. So I would actually put this... I mean, if you get early game going, you're a paladin. You'll just like, like you know how paladin usually runs out of steam sometimes in arena. Like you just like that AOE. But once you once you start getting dragons late game, like during consort and Nixian, so maybe we we'll put mechs in here instead of the mage then. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that, that could be fine. Make list. Oh, but then it has mechs and dragons. It maybe it doesn't make. Yeah, sense. that's too much. Too much. That's for a priest. No, that's for a priest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we if we're not playing priest anyway. I think we want to play priest. It's still 3-4. Seems so easy to win a double blow with Chosen. How many battle cries? I think I might play this. One, two, oh Consort no. One, two, cry. three, four. Here, Hafu. Uh, you're going Paladin or Warlock. I'll I'm, I'll I'm going Paladin. Priest and Strife Crow. Are you going. actually playing Priest over Mage? No, no Strife Crow is going Mage. Then. Okay. Yeah. You're going to play Priest? Yeah. That has got Priest. Over Warlock? Okay, I so would yeah, it looks like Strife is a warlock list. Captain for the Rangers there. there. He was talking a little bit about Paladin. Like, they're set on Paladin, but he's, like, saying yeah. things like, what was that about, like, sometimes they run out of steam. Yeah. He's looking for some late game. He was going for the dragons. I think I heard Dragon Consort. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's a it's a medium-sized, high-value card. If you if you put Dragon Consorts in pairs, sometimes if you draw two, you can play Dragon Consort next turn, you can play Dragon yeah. Consort for cheaper. A strong card. Yeah, it's very strong. And it's scary. You see that thing hit the board. You're like, is it Ysera coming? Yeah. Or oh. remember they got the, they got the Nosdormu and the Anixia. Is the Nosdormu in there? I can see and the, Deathwing. I see the Deathwing. They and got the, the Trifecta. I don't know. If th they have the Nosdormu too. Look, it's in there. Yeah. Is that a Chillwind? Yeah. Or what's his name? Chill. Chillma. Chillma. Um, yeah. It might be, but uh, normally people think of the Trifecta as being like Alexstrasza, um, Yasera. 
yeah, Nefarian. Or, you know, sometimes there's uh, Anixia put in or was for a while, but the trifecta for Cloud Nine is Deathwing, Nazdormu, and Chilmaw. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what they can make work with that. Oh, yeah. I was actually listening to the Archon while you guys were listening to the Cloud Nine, and they are, it looks like they're kind of in a bad spot. They, they, they're they set on Druid and Hunter, and then as their third class, they're going to choose between Mage and Priest, which is kind of a bad sign, because, like, we thought they had, like, the Mage for sure. Yeah. But the fact that they're like, ah, I guess we're going to go Mage is our last one is kind of... Not that great. Yeah, I, I don't remember seeing too many high-impact mage commons for Team Archon. Yeah, I think I saw Flame Waker in there, but, you know, that's kind of really dependent on what spells you get. Uh, uh, yeah, 2 four's decent, but, I mean, Flame Waker gets its value when you get those cheap tempo spells. Like, yeah. Flame Cannon is super good in combination with Flame Waker if you're talking about Arena. Uh, Frostbolt as well, but I, I don't remember them opening too many high-impact spells. Yeah, plus... You, well, usually you want the cheap ones because you can afford a bunch of spells, but those yeah. are kind of like a liability in a You don't really want to be drawing arcane explosion. Yeah, we can see them. The time. We can see them looking at their top end there. Um, was that Mechanir Thermoplug? Uh, Kelthazad. Kelthazad seems good in good. any deck. Is Looks that like they're gonna put in the Druid deck with the potentially ramp, potential ramp is out of volcanic lumber. Yeah. Oh, they got a Sky Captain Crag. Oh, this is like a taunt deck. I see Senjins, volcanic lumber, the Black Knight. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, did they get any Iron Bark Protectors? There's the Sludge Belchers. Moment. Just all the taunts. Just yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at uh, what Team Archon's thought process is behind yeah. these deck choices. Oh, let's put uh, the Tomb Spider in Hunter as well. Is that uh, card creeper? good? That card is insane in Hunter. Or uh, Druid. I guess we have a lot of beast synergy cards. Tomb Spider can't No, hurt. no, it just discovers a good card, right? You need the card draw. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, th no, it's, yeah, it's either there or there. We all have right. the Gorilla Bot, which we... I like Creeper, Flame Sugar. Oh. Definitely putting in Creeper, right? It's got to be. But we're, like, in Hunter? Yeah. Okay. Do we have the we have one egg and how many abusives? One egg, one abusive, one creeper. I think we could. There's two um, shattered sun cleric as well. Is that? Do we have direwolf alpha? We could put all that into the. Um, uh, I don't think so. Into the druid deck, maybe or no, no probably not. No. I don't know. That whole package is seeming a little sketchy. <laughs> oh, go back to druid. Let's finish that deck first. Uh, so we need, uh, if we're looking at this deck, we need more two drops. Yeah, Six for sure. Blues. Uh, sure. It's fine. Druid does pretty bad against weapons anyways. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Flame juggler. Flame juggler. You're going to be, th th your deck has so much late game. You need to yeah. have ways to not fall behind against Huge like Toad drop. is probably going to be a hunter, in my opinion. If hunter doesn't, need, does hunter need more two drops? It might not. What's the turn plays in two? I think we want one more. Do we want the hyena in, in hunter? I th I think hyena is still a weak card in arena. Like you, n you rarely, rarely pull it off. It's not great on two, but it's not the worst top deck. Uh, I don't I know. I, I, I don't I'm not think a fan of it. I don't think our pool is strong enough to just discard that type of card though. Okay. Well, what if we just put like double huge toads in hunter? Do we have two? Yeah. We have two. Okay, I'm fine with that. I think hunter, the hunter. Okay. It's, it's we're like pretty good. Six two drops right Wait, there. Wait, the druid is really good with egg, right? We have mark the wild. We have power of the wild. Mark of the Wild, Power of the Wild. We have Keeper else? of the Grove. <laughs> <laughs> Something. That's cute, I guess. We can put Abusive in, in a Druid Are as well. Are we playing Shattered Sun Cleric and Abusive in Druid? Like, I mean we need more threes anyway. I don't think that's that bad. I don't think that's bad uh, by call. We have Savage Roar too, right? We should definitely put that We don't have Savage Roar. We don't? Do we? Do we go I back to Druid? I mean, Savage Roar is insane. I would have definitely put it one. Maybe. No. No. I mean, we could put in Mark of Nature. Poison Seeds of Volcanic Lumper and the eggs. We only have one egg, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, let's just put the... Abusive uh, is good with Limiards. Yeah, Abusive is good. I, I'll put it I here. Think, I think the Abusive makes sense in Druid. We need to. We need more... I think we need one more two drop. It's uh next page here. We have what? W we have Fairy Dragon. One, two, three, four. Let's carry with the egg. Wait, where's the egg? Oh, the egg is here, right? Yeah. Wait, uh, next page. Put double shards on here now, I guess. Where is that? Yeah, it's fine with like Drew to the flame and stuff. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of lower attack, higher health Where's guys. Where's Harvest Golem going? Harvest Golem is going somewhere. Mm. Wait, we have two Raptors here already, right? Man, the three drops look fine here. We need four drops now for this deck. Yeah, I think this deck so wants... So like Yeti, we opened the Yeti, I remember. I think this deck does want the Yeti the most. Yeah. Heckler is also really good. Do we need Gnomish in this deck? We have a lot of big things. I think we can. So no. I think no is better used. Slay. I can't hear you. You can't oh. hear me. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Coldmaster is really good with Loon Roots too. I think um, 
Gnomish is best used in the mage deck because that's the lowest curve. It's going to have time to play Gnomish. Okay. Wait, wait. Cult Master on uh, Hunter is pretty good, right? Uh, we have Unleash and Haunted Creeper. Haunted Creeper. Vibe Spinner, Hunter's Mark. Kind of synergizes. I mean, it's a 4-2. Well. It's not bad. <laughs> I think okay. it's fine. Faceless with the KT deck. I can go with that. Uh, I'm not sure I follow that reasoning, but okay. <laughs> well, it's just like, you know, you just win games. All the times they don't kill your KT and you need help winning. No, no, no. Slate. It's just like... Amaz, Amaz has hard times, man. <laughs> Give him a break. <laughs> Do we want Fen Creeper know. somewhere? I think Fen Creeper's going somewhere. We already somewhere. have four Belchers, so maybe Sentient's not. Sentient's going well, somewhere. Well, it could go in the deck that doesn't get the Belchers. No, well, like, the t thing is, like, Druid is really taunt-heavy, right? Because I think Sentient's good. It has Sengen's no reaction. Good. Yeah, so you need, just put Well, you just here. need four drops, right? Yeah. Next page. Shit. Kodo needs to be in somewhere. Arjun needs to go somewhere. We do not have very many fours here. Do we need more twos to compensate for the lack of fours? Because we can go two and two on four. Let's just put Kodo in the Hunter deck. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Arjun Commander is definitely a card we should put in some of these one of these decks. I think yep. it's best in the Mage. Yeah, the Mage is kind of aggressive. Mage, yeah, the Mage is the lowest curve. It's going to benefit from a card like Arjun Commander, I think. Do we still want the double Chow in Mage if we're trying to be aggressive with it? The double chow. Well, it's not like aggressive, like burn aggressive. It's like... Yeah, but are there like better cards that we can put in? The zombie chow could benefit the other classes. Well, more. this deck can't afford to fall behind is the thing. That's true. Next page. We need to put these dragon and crushers somewhere. Mm, not really. No? Yeah, I could, but not strong enough. Oh, God. Mechineer's fine. Frost giant's fine. Frost giant's a good draw late. That's really bad early. Yeah, but you need some win conditions in arena, and this it, this format has no PGH or anything like that. So anything that's like a big creature is good. We didn't get probably playing this captured Jormungar somewhere. I like it in Druid. The Druid has no sevens, but maybe the Druid just doesn't need any more late game. It's already got double lumber, KT, Belchers. I don't know. You don't have that much late game. I think uh, with the last two cards of Druid, it's just a little bit more early game, right? It needs to be consistent. Then we have a Thalanos or something. So what do we want for early game then? Like, more card draw, to be honest. No, we don't need draw. We have so many fatties, right? Let's go back to Druid. Mm. We put Next in everything page. we could from Druid, I think. Let's uh. play Bluegill Warrior. It's honestly not that bad, right? Yeah, it's like a shitty... Two mana deal, too. Low Rocket Show. <laughs> uh, we could revisit Lance Carrier. Is that any good? We have Nerubian Egg. Otherwise, it's kind of sketchy. It's it's we not that bad raptors. with the, well, we have a lot of like low yeah. power high. The problem is we have a lot things. of buff cards in Druid, yeah, and not I that agree. many like board Sticky presence things. cards. To well, use. the two living roots is board presence. There's right? definitely yeah. a world where we want this um, haunted creeper in this Druid, not this hunter. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's pretty cool to see the the conversations going on. Just a quick update to those of you who might just be tuning in. We're in the middle of the deck building process for the first match of the day between Team Archon and Cloud9. They have about 11, uh, almost 12 minutes remaining in their deck building process. We saw them open packs a little bit earlier. Now they're trying to build those three decks uh, with the 240 cards that they were given. And uh, Archon, they're talking a lot about curve. Yeah, they really want to get that Druid deck right. They're going with Hunter, which is traditionally a weaker arena class, but they have that Cult Master. Maybe there's some Unleashes in there. Cult Master's pretty sick in Hunter. Mm -hmm. I like it. We also saw the Tomb Spider, which Amaz is like really a fan of. We saw that yesterday yeah. too. He was building decks. He's like two Tomb Spiders. Put him in right now. The Discover yeah. mechanic is just great for Arena because of the choices you get. Like, yeah. Do I need value? Do I need tempo? Just really solid. Yeah. Well, to get more insight into Team Archon's decision making, we have Dan standing by on the stage with Amnesiac. All right, guys. Uh, we got here. It's a little bit of a hasty shuffle in the beginning. So, Amnesiac, welcome to the team, man. It's really interesting to see you. Are you nervous at all competing in your first event? Yeah, I mean, I'm nervous. I think if you're nervous, it just means you care, which is really a good thing. Uh, just a healthy amount, though. I'm not, like, shaking or anything. I'm excited to play. It should be a lot of fun. What's the dynamic like? You never really met Amaz and Zelay, so what are some of your first impressions of being on the team? It's a lot like how I talk to them online. They're not different people, but it, it's really cool to get to meet everyone that I've met, like, online and everything. It, it's been a really fun experience so far. For people who don't really know much about Amnesiac, he's often touted as a 15-year-old you know, phenom in a way just because he's really young and we don't really see many young people compete. Do you feel like that's more of a chip on your shoulder or are you kind of proud that that's your claim to fame? I don't really want my merit to be based off my age. I think if you took age out of the equation, I'd still be here 
I don't think that's why I'm here. I mean, I guess it's it's kind of a cool thing. It's exciting to be like kind of leading the way for younger people in terms of esports. But I think my merit is why I'm here, not because of my age. Awesome. And uh, I guess the last question I want to ask is, how, how are you feeling really, con are you feeling confident about your draft? I know something that people always chalk up the format to is like, you know, you got to play with the cards you're getting. Are you guys pretty happy with what you have? You don't have to talk too much about strategy because I know the team's right over there. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I think, I think we've got some good ideas going. It's definitely going to be cool. I, th I think our pool is solid. Not great, but solid. All right, man. Well, thanks so much and good luck yeah. in your match. All right. Thank you. All right, cool to s cool to see. Solid, but not great. Yeah, I like what he was saying said. at the end there. It's like when the the teams have like what might appear to be like a, a weaker draft. It takes it took them a little longer to decide what they're going to do, but with a little creativity, they can figure out some good strats. Yeah, and, and something that Amaz mentioned earlier that I really want to uh, hit on is uh, one he was making comparisons to Arena, which we talked about is kind of dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the the way that he said you need a win condition in Arena is actually pretty important. Uh, you need a way to just like pop a card down and say, you know what, deal with this or you lose. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, that that was a really good idea. Oh, they definitely have it in their Druid deck. They had Sludge Belcher Kel'Thuzad. I mean, if your Sludge Belcher lives and you put a Kel'Thuzad down, that could just be game over. Yeah. It just keeps reviving and reviving. Yeah, and it seemed like they curved out well uh, in that Druid deck. So mm -hmm. keep an eye on that deck as the day goes on. Kel'Thuzad probably going to win them some games. Uh, oh, looking over on the other side, Cloud9, um, they've sort of been... Uh, in the dark a little bit. Uh, they're yeah. building Paladin, which we talked a little bit about it yesterday. Probably one of the strongest class in this format, just because of all the strong commons. And we can see in that deck already, Shield of Minibots, Seal of Champions, uh, some really strong cards in there. Yeah, they built all three of their decks really quick, and they've just been refining from there. They're like making sure each one has like a theme or a strategy that works. I heard like them talking about the Priest. Strife goes like, I want it to be a little faster. That way we get the control later. We have the we get to mind control range, for example. They were talking about Rafam. I think they ended up putting in the Priest. I know Strifecrow is advocating for that, but I don't know if uh, Half Moon Tides nixed it. I see Tides just like switch seats with uh, Strife. He's like, no, 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 let me get in the middle here. Yeah. Uh, Stri or Tides is, is a guy that loves to be in control of things. Yeah. When we were discussing team captains yesterday, <laughs> he was very adamant that he wanted to be uh, the captain for, for Cloud9. So uh, not surprised to see him sort of take the reins on the deck building. And uh, Deathwing in their Paladin deck. Nice. That's going to be... That Dragon really Valley. cool to see how that performs. Yeah. And Strifecrow seems like more the type to like take an idea and think it over in a little bit. So it makes more sense to for me to see him on the side. He's like thinking about the Priest deck right now while they work on the uh, the mage there. Yeah. All arena players always have that moment where they're saying, okay, the only way I lose this game now is a Deathwing <laughs> off the top. And uh, it might just happen oh, yeah. coming into uh, these matches with Cloud9. And uh, Chogs over the Earthinator, we can see that in the Shaman deck, which uh, we hadn't talked too much about that, but uh, Shaman's actually synergized really well with mechs. Power Mace is actually, uh, it's a rare, but in this type of format where you get to open all those packs, uh, Power Mace is actually pretty likely. Yeah, and they had Whirling's Appomattox, things like that. Yeah, not even the Whirling. Just any mech gets a 2-2, and all of a sudden it's, it's going to be a 2-for-1 at least. It's going to survive, yeah. it's going to trade, it's going to go face, anything. Yeah. yeah. We don't, I haven't seen that many spells, though. Here's their, they're building the Mage on Archon's side. You can see they only have, they have the Flame Strike, the Frostbolt, the... Uh, the something else, the blizzard. Oh yeah, the blizzard. The blizzard's in there. That one's yeah. actually pretty good against. It's interesting against Trogzor. They hit the Trogzor. You can blizzard it. The blizzard will hit the new creature, and then they can flame strike it next round. But then a new one will live the flame strike. It's really interesting. Yeah, and uh, it's cool to see the different strategies coming into this. Uh, as we talked about earlier, um, it seemed like Team Archon settled on classes very early. They settled on Mage Hunter and Druid very early on. And all, yeah, and the way the format is, every single deck will play every other single deck. Yeah. So you can talk about, yeah, the Mage versus Trogzor, the Mage versus the yeah. Dragon Paladin, for example. Yeah. Cloud9, on the other hand, they actually uh, even still have more than that. They have a Shaman deck built, they have a Paladin deck built, they have a Priest deck built, and then they also have elements of a Warlock deck and a Mage deck. So uh, now they're going to take the remaining seven minutes uh, to just sort of, you know, refine and, and pick which deck they want to go. It can be a little bit dangerous because you can, you know hide a card, a high-value card in that mage deck and then forget about it Yeah, and not end up putting it in one of the decks you're actually going to use. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they probably just have the class cards. In they wouldn't risk that. But, yeah, I wonder... Archon built the Hunter deck so quickly, which is weird because it should be the hardest one to build. Yeah. I wonder what, like if they have, like, a, a strat that for the deck and they're done with it because I didn't get to see any of the late game or what it's trying to do. If it's trying to be a mid-range, an aggro deck, for example. You With a Hunter deck in this type of format, you have to have an identity. Yeah, uh, because Hunter Hero Power doesn't affect the board, so you have to have cards that uh, have a plan, have a set plan. You have to either get really ahead early and be an aggro hunter, or you have to, you know, um, 
have lots and lots of control elements, like spells, like multi-shot, explosive shot, and followed up with big guys like Savannah Hymane. So with Hunter, you can't just curve out like you can with other I classes. I think we're going to get a peek right here. Oh, they click Druid. Click the Hunter. Uh, okay, of course, right when I call it. Yeah, they're just going through right now to, like you said, refine those those decks. So Yeah, I like the Druid deck a lot. Um, yeah. I wonder, it's like a slow deck. It's got a lot of value, but I wonder if it can outvalue that Priest that uh, or that Dragon Pally that Cloud9 has. Okay, here's the Hunter deck. I see one Savannah and not much else. Yeah. Some Belchers, some Kodos, well, the Tomb Spiders. As Cloud9 wraps up their draft, we actually have uh, Dan standing by on the stage who's going to have a few words with Strife Girl. All right, Strife, uh, welcome hey. to the tournament. Uh, you were saying before with Tides you really enjoy this format. Uh, why, why is it exactly that you enjoy it? Uh, I like it because you get to work with a team. There's not a lot of uh, Hearthstone tournaments that are team-based. Most are solo, so it's like you get lonely playing Hearthstone a lot. So, uh, yeah, that's why I like it. Yeah, and what's it like uh, working with Hoffa? I know Tides was saying that specifically her arena expertise comes in. She's actually piloting a lot of your decisions. Uh, how do you feel like you guys are balancing so far? Uh, I feel like we have a good mix of everything. Yeah, she's, uh, she's really good at arena. And I mean, we've definitely learned a lot just from talking to her about arena. So. I think we have all our decks built pretty well now. It's like uh, they feel much more powerful than the average arena decks. So. Yeah. Uh, no worries, you don't have to talk strategy. I know they're right over there. Uh, so I wanted to ask a little bit also about your personal record in mm -hmm. team formats. Back in the day, Strive Co., about two or three years ago, there was this awesome program called Fight Night, and people were really taking notice of your performance specifically because you won so many games, and you carried, back then, liquid value uh, to many victories. Is that going to be the same strife we see today? I think so. But to be honest, it's because I got the boom. <laughs> that's right. Oh, we were seeing that. And we were like, oh, that's awesome. But that card something means uh, something special to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's my, it's my bay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, strife You only have a few minutes left. Uh, but you're feeling pretty good so far, right? I think you guys match up pretty well against Archon. Yeah. Feeling like good about your chances? Yeah. I'm feeling good about it. I know we'll win, so just waiting for the inevitable. <laughs> oh, all right. A little bit of confidence from Strike. I love it. Good luck, man. I don't want to take too much of your time. All righty. He said it. He got the boom. Yeah. I wonder, is that the mage deck? Because, like, the dragons already got, yeah, it's the mage deck. Okay, cool. And, yeah, we were kind of joking that Cloud9 was a little bit more individualistic. But you saw, like, they are talking about teamwork. I remember I heard Tides when they were listening. He was like, oh, yeah, you guys can take that card. I don't need it. Yeah, yeah. The less of the Tides we saw in the interview. Yeah. I'm curious to see, like, what... Strife Girl had to give up in order to get yeah. the Doctor Boom. Well, he's got the Mage deck. It's got a Flame Strike. It's got a Boom, and then that it just wins right there. Yeah. Um, yeah and then we got the Priest and the Pally. Uh, the Priest, um, I believe the Priest had a Mind Control, but yeah. they haven't. I think it had the Rafam as well. It had the Rafam. Yeah, I think okay. I might have saw a Kraken in there. Had uh, some late game, but not as exciting as the Paladin Dragon, yeah. for example. And what's funny is uh, Amaz actually said earlier, he's like, "Oh, we don't have to worry about Big Game Hunter. Big Game Hunter's not in this format." Well, there's actually oh. was a. <laughs> Big Game Hunter drafted for uh, Cloud9. Oh, well, Cloud9's I, thinking about it. They're like, we have three drops. Maybe we just... Yeah. Like, as you can see, you can see the three drops right there are not that great. They, they already did the Earthen, the Blackwing tech, which works because of the Dragon deck. Mm -hmm. They have the Fiola or the other one. I can't tell. I think it's the Fiola. Yeah. But yeah, they don't have many three drops. So I, they might just play it as a three drop or, you know, if they happen to have it versus... Team Archons with Lumbering, mm -hmm. or what is that? Oh, Frost volcanic Giant. Volcanic Lumber. The Frost Giant, you know. Uh, they also have Volcanic Lumber in the... What are the deck. stats? <laughs> what do you, what do you Seven, eight, okay, okay, I believe. Double checking. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it just costs cheaper. Yeah, yeah. We, we we didn't see Muster for Battle in the Paladin deck as well, which is a super strong card in this format. We talked about the strong Paladin class card. So, uh, like you said, that could end up being just a three drop that they put in as sort of like a contingency plan. I see the Mage deck there. Is there no Flame Strike? I thought they had a Flame Strike. No, I, they had On the Archon Blizzard. Side. Yeah. Yeah. I just assumed. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, uh, as we count down uh, towards the end, let's uh, take a listen into Cloud9 as they wrap up uh, their drafting. No, 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 I really like the Farseer with double... Oh, I have one Death Lord. Mm. Well, with double Valentros and Death Lord and Soul Priest. You really don't want the Voodoo Doctor? I really think you should take the one. I, I don't know how to put him in. I'd have to take out stuff down here, maybe the Jin. Uh, you did get Jin. I think you should have a Jin. Jin is... You want, like, a couple five drops at least. Jin. Okay, so Big Game Hunter and and Voodoo Doctor. I don't know what to take out for them. Like maybe on Civil. Also, Ghoul. like Jin is such a big threat. Like even if you take if out on Civil Ghoul for one of them. Like even if you don't have that many Jin activators, they don't know that. Like they're gonna go all in on killing it all the times. Like, you know, does he feel confident versus Paladin? 
I don't know, what do you, what do you guys think? Uh, let's see. Cool is the most situational card, so if you're going to take a, a card, it would have to be that one. I, I think the ghoul's better pick than hunter. I would keep him ghoul. Yeah, pro I don't know. I don't like ghoul that much. Oh. It's okay, I guess. It's a nice valence target. Oh, what did I just take out? Fuck. Cool. I took out cool. a 3-drop. You take out the ghoul. Well, I took out something else on accident. I double-clicked. That was definitely. <laughs> Well, you have 45 seconds. So we save? Oh. oh. Okay. Like delete our other decks. How much time do we have? 35 seconds. Yeah. Oh. So we save? Save. You save yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. So I'll save. Yeah, you're good, right? Um, yeah, let's save with that Bigam Hunter. It's either Farsi or Bigam Hunter. What do you guys think? Or Ogre Breeder. Uh, this is your deck. Okay, I'll take out Ogre. Yeah. Okay. I think it's fine. <laughs> oh no, I love that Ogre. Me too, but it's kind of annoying. It's unreliable. Yeah, you miss a decent game. amount. I want that Smorgre. Okay. Okay. Lego. Okay. We need to switch back. Okay. All right, well, as we wrap up the deck building here, the players are going to uh, move around, switch their seats. Uh, we saw them save their decks there. Uh, I believe Archon just finished their deck building as well. So uh, that's uh, uh, super interesting. It's really cool to see uh, what they ended up on. So Archon has the Druid Hunter Mage, I believe, and uh, Cloud9 has the uh, Priest, uh, the Mage, and the Paladin. Yes. And it looks like uh, we're going to see Strife Crow on the Mage, priest, uh, Tides on the Priest, and probably Hapu on the Pally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so let's talk a little bit about some of the high-impact cards yeah. that we're going to see here. Um, so the Priest had some interesting things. They had the, the Viola Light yeah, yeah. Bane yeah. Uh, in combination with some you know buff spells. Yeah, but even more important than the Viola was the Dijini. I don't know how to pronounce the it. Dijini, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you Valen something, he gets the Valens. If you Power Shield, he gets the Power Shield. It's pretty strong. Yeah, uh, they have some interesting combinations there. We also saw them debating on whether or not to put the Big Game Hunter in. They didn't dra draft the Shadow or Death. Yeah. Which is a big and thing to know. Yeah, there's one pain. But that, that was the thing that yeah. scared me about the Priest deck. It had a lot of good cards. It had, like, the uh, the two Valens, the, the Temple Enforcer, but there was no one drop. So it's going to struggle with Tempo. There's, like, no yeah. Holy Nova, no Excavated Evil. Yeah. So it's really going to struggle to get on the board. If it misses that one drop, you, you hear power in the next turn, you're, you're going to be in trouble. It's a really Feast or Famine deck. If they get ahead on board with the Priest, they're going to be in a great spot. But if they fall behind, it's going to be really hard uh, for them to come back. Yeah. The Paladin, on the other hand did have the death wing so if they nope. get behind on board they have no the problem. ultimate comeback tool in that game just keep it in the starting hand yeah <laughs> in the you're starting good. hand you're good okay and of course as we said stripe go he said oh i got the boom I'm just saying if so I he's got the dr boom so let's talk a little bit about archon um they had the druid which was very taunt heavy um they have volcanic lumber dungeons uh sludge belchers yeah they that's had not going to be good against the priest for example yeah. or the paladin which all they want is time. Yeah. But I, I just heard, heard Hafu saying something about if she gets run over early. I'm not sure if she's the paladin or the priest. I think she's the paladin. So mm -hmm. again, the paladin and their priest are a little bit vulnerable to aggro, it sounds like. Yeah. And uh, the hunter deck, we talked about how hunters uh, need sort of a, a game plan. And as the deck sort of uh, got changed around, they do have some removal spells. Uh, they do have, like, tracking plus hunter's mark, which okay. in combination with those big bombs, they have high main plus... Kill command times two. They yeah. can control the game. Oh, I didn't see the kill command. Out. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it looked kind of like it was just a mid range. Like they had the, a lot of draw with the cult master and the tomb spiders, yeah. which I count as draw. So mm -hmm. It looked like just like a normal solid deck, which I don't know if that's going to be enough. I don't With a hunter, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. I think it's to see the one drops are the, you know. Yeah. They had, they had like double abusive, though. I don't know if they put in the druid or the hunter. It's a pretty good card. Yeah. And, of course, rounding off that lineup for Archon was the mage. Um so no flame strikes, but they did draft a blizzard. Blizzard solid. Yeah, it's more of a like a tempo. Like you go aggro with that, you freeze their board, you go face. Yeah, and of and course then you threaten the flame strike. You th you threaten it. Yeah, there's always that that looming threat, and of course frost giant and mechanier as their two big bombs to that deck. Mm -hmm. um, mechanier or mechanier. Yeah. So you, you play that. It. And then if you have a board, you trade, and then you get some leper gnomes. I think that's how it works. Yeah, you can't really afford a spell with that. So. Yeah, when I believe whenever an enemy minion dies, it summons a leper gnome on your side okay. of the board. Uh, so it's sort of a. It feels like one of those win more cards. Yeah, it's weird. It's if like you're if you're already winning enough to where you can play a, a mechanier thermal plug for nine mana onto a board, 
uh, then you're probably going to win anyway, even without the leper gnomes that were spawn. But sometimes it does give you that little bit of extra yeah. oomph if you have burn spells in your hand. Exactly. Which we did see a few for Mage. I believe there was like a Forgotten yeah, I saw Torch. Frostbolt. And yeah, Frostbolt. Torch. Um, the then, Argent Commander, which is kind of like a burn spell. Yeah, that's true. Um, once upon a time, Argent Commander was played in constructed decks. Oh, yeah, that's a great card. Because uh, Azure Drake was so popular. Yeah, you used to have 3 HP. Yeah. So yeah, well, yeah, back when 3 HP, it would be turn 5 Azure Drake. Turn turn 6, you play uh, Argent Commander. You kill the Azure Drake, Run and all of a sudden you have 6-3 on the board. So. Yeah. Uh, pretty strong, and those sort of interactions you need to keep in mind when you're drafting with potentially suboptimal cards like we see for this format. Yeah, so I am. It looked like the Cloud Nine deck was pretty strong, and the draft was pretty strong. Yeah, but uh, Archon's doing what they can with what I would say is a weaker uh, pool. Yeah, but we'll see what they do.